One, two, three, four. Helen E. here in Burbank, California. Always great to be joined by the one and only Mr. Jason Mayhem Miller. Always great to see you. It's great to see you too. It's great to see you, especially at uh, Burbank Marriott. I mean, UNF coming up, pretty excited. I know. There, it, it's a cool setup in here. It is. It's like, uh, you know, brings me back to the days. This is like way classier than anything I fought at in my early career. You know, it was always like a janky, like, veterans hall you know what i'm saying it was like oh back in back in uh before the sport got real big we always had to fight at like the craziest janky venues where you know you're walking through like it's fight club so it's a back alley kind of deal and now we're at the marriott man the sport has come so far i i, I feel so blessed to be a part of it yeah it's a very intimate room in here but where was your favorite place to fight i gotta tell you Bladesdale Arena in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii was my favorite. I mean, uh, man, uh, when I beat Rob Lawler over there, the it was so deafening in that place because of, I don't know, the echo and the, it just was, or Saitama Super Arena in, in Japan, which had like a crazy thing where if we sold a bunch of tickets, the entire arena was on wheels and would go and like get bigger. That was crazy. I mean, you really live in the future if you live in Tokyo. And their sushi's the best. Well, that's to be debated. I know a couple places around the valley that have some badass sushi. I'm, I'm going to let you know. I'm, I'm going to show, show you guys what's up. Hold on. I'm a sushi connoisseur, even though I'm Chinese. But you're <laughs> telling me the sushi in California is better than Japan? I mean, look, maybe this is my whiteness talking, but I think that they've figured out a couple of things here. In, uh, and I'm not talking California rolls either, but I don't know. Actually, you you know what? You got me. You got me, ye, as you always do. Uh, you're right. I, I think I did go to one place in Japan that, I mean, it was just uh, legendary. And you didn't even have to eat it off a naked woman. Do you do the all you can eat though? I mean, naked women. Oh, oh, oh my bad. Oh, I, uh, yeah, we hit the all you can eat. Uh, you know, like I said, Pasadena got a place called. I put it on my. I put it on my Instas. It was some kind of uh, oh, all you can eat joint. Oh man, I ate so much that I had to take a nap. That's that's where it's at. If, you know the sushi is good if you have to take a nap after. Sounds like a great time. But hey, what have you been up to? How are you? I'm great. I'm great. You know, it's a weird thing where, I don't know, I guess you call it growing up where, you know, you can go through hell in your life and figure out how to stop that hell. And then once you decide to leave hell, then your whole life turns around. So I'm kind of uh, in this place where I'm trying to um, uh, bring up everyone around me. And it's really working out because the, the more positive I put out there, I, I didn't really believe in all this hippy dippy kind of stuff where you put out positivity and you get back positivity because I was so enamored with this kind of gangster lifestyle. And I just left it behind. I, I think that it's a strange kind of um, mentality that you have to break, uh, especially coming from where I come from, where, you know, I fought men my whole life. Uh, cage, cage fights is like... Uh, puts you into a very um, uh, aggressive mentality and, uh, you know, caught up with all this alpha culture, I realized that the real alphas, okay, are the guys who bring everyone together. You know, the alpha thing is was always uh, based on wolves. And yeah, you know, if you, 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 if you <laughs> pack hunt, you need to be the meanest, toughest, and be able to bite every, everyone on the neck. Uh, stronger than ever, but human beings are a different breed. Human be beings um, have evolved to be positive uh, to the the real boss of bosses is the one who can get everybody to work together and everybody to uh, uh, achieve a common goal. So that's what I'm trying to do these days. Well, I'm really proud of you. 
you've come a long way. Thank you. I've been hearing that a lot recently. So, I, you know what I mean? I kind of feel strange, like, uh, going, I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. But, yeah. No, I'm, it's a good thing. I know. I know. I, you know, I, I'm just uh, being humble and just doing my work every day. You know, I, I got... I'm still here over at Fight Science helping a, a lot of guys there. And, you know, to see these guys with uh, big dreams uh, working so hard to achieve them and uh, such discipline, it, it, it reaffirms my, you know, my, my belief that, you know, this is a good world. You know, like uh, the next generation's coming in. You know, I've got Brady Hong fighting for the title against Ethan Goss in Pittsburgh. Uh, that's going to be a great fight. This guy's working his butt cheeks off. And, you know, it, it's like, um, you know, it's a really new era for me. And, uh, you know, I spent so long in the doldrums, like the, with a negative mentality that being the light is kind of burning my eyes, you know, like I, I lived in darkness for a long time. And, and to, to be up out of that is really freeing. Well, you're never too young or too old to kind of turn things around and see the light, right? Yeah, you're right. I, I'm i too old because I don't even know what this Riz is. These guys are lit off the za. There's freaking no capping. I, I, I finally got old enough where I don't know what language these kids are speaking, but I'm just rolling with it. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's always so much going on, and especially in the fight world, as you know, just the other night, Dana White announced that we have a big middleweight fight coming up, and you fought in the middleweight division for a very long time. Robert Whitaker is going to fight Hamzat Chemaev. What do you think of that matchup? Oh, wow. Well, look, man, Whitaker has got that style that, you know, is so exciting to watch and uh, very, like, uh, edge-of-your-seat kind of, kind of fighter. I don't know if he has the wrestling ability to – hold off Chemayev's like takedowns and the swarm attack you know he kind of th those those guys uh striking style is so kind of bizarre where they come at you from all angles and then they have the wrestling in their back pocket where they just can just blanket you with takedowns and with man that, that that's a tough one that, that's one of those ones where my heart's with Whitaker you know but my wallet might be <laughs> with, with Jemaya because I, you know, if in with all things equal, you kind of got to edge towards the guy who could wrestle better. And I don't know. Like I said, I, I, I really want Whitaker to come out on top. So I'm not going to put no bad juju on him. Well, speaking of good juju and looking at the champion, Trikas Duplessis, it looks like right now, uh, Israel, it looks like. They may be putting that fight together, or there's a lot of interest for that fight. So uh, explain to me, because I missed a few fights. Uh, it's all good. Is, uh, is Israel fighting for the title because he earned this spot? Because, as I understand it, Sean Strickland fight with the police was very close, and they could run it back right now, you know? Uh, did, did Izzy beat a top contender to get this? No? no. He hasn't? So he just gets elevated to the title shot just yeah. because he's Izzy. Well, granted, Izzy How is one of the best champions that we've ever seen at, at 85. You know, not since Anderson Silva have you seen, like, a dominant, you know, run like that. But, I mean, he lost the title, you know, and usually they send a guy out to the road to get pick up one before you fight for the title again. I don't know. I, you know, and... It's not guaranteed that Izzy's going to just jump back in. If he does fight, that Duplessis, oh, man, this guy's beastly. Like, I, I really think it's a bad style matchup for Izzy, sort of. He might he might drop another one, and so what? This guy uh, lost the title, fought for the title, lost the title. That puts him in a real bad spot. I, I mean, I don't know what they're doing over there. I, I, I would have done a little different. Like, have those guys on the same card, maybe have Duplessis, uh, you know, defend a title against a top contender. Maybe it is easy. Like I said, I'm a little uneducated right here, but uh, I, I would, I would do it a little differently to get the fans more involved and get to see a more a wider variety of each of those top contenders in '85. All these guys we're talking about uh, to see the the to see a little more of their variety. 
you know? But that's just me. I, I think I, I get it. It's a business where they want to make sure that these top contenders are uh, keep fighting each other for the title. But I think that, you know, like a tune-up fight for each guy would be smart and it would stretch the money a little longer. Yeah, yeah I guess they just want to save some money. So, I mean, you mentioned that you would do things a bit differently. Then who would you put, you know, up there to fight Drikas? And we also have, I think a lot of people don't bring his name up that much, Jared Cannonier. I mean, he's on a win streak too. Yeah. I, I, well, see, I don't know a lot about Cannonier. I haven't, like, researched him uh, in depth. But, yeah, that that's a name. Uh, also, though, all right, here's the thing is that, okay, have Duplessis fight whoever's one or two, and it might be Izzy and, and Strickland. There you go. That maybe that's one and two. Uh, in my mind, that's who they are. But have uh, have these other fighters fight some guys that are unproven, and then that way, if there's a guy out there that may be up there to rocket ship to fame, then you got him uh, fighting a big name guy like Strickland or or Izzy, and then you know. The styles make fights. So if you put a, a style that might be very challenging for Strickland or challenging for Izzy, but this guy more than likely will not defeat him, well, then good. You've just secured uh, these top-ranked, top-named 185ers to go up to the next level, you know, or to showcase the fighters yeah. so that they're we remember oh, how great Strickland is, how great Izzy is. Mm -hmm. And it's a safer bet. It's a safer thing where the guy's not going to get injured, or and then he can get back in that title. You know, it, it it's strange. I, I I don't know exactly what <laughs> what their mentality is over there, but like I said, I you know you can't argue with the results. The the shows are getting bigger all the time and and doing really good. So uh, it, it's a very interesting time in mixed martial arts. Yeah, and speaking of big shows, UFC three hundred. It's yeah. coming up right around the corner, and it's headlined by Alex Pereira, who has fought Izzy multiple times. He's going to be fighting Jamal Hill, who's never lost the title. So who do you think wins? You know, Pereira is like this guy. He's like really, uh, man, a uh, complete martial artist where he does everything really well. Obviously, his striking is second to none uh if i'm if i'm correct he, he defeated izzy in a kickboxing ring right yeah. okay so a couple times right so and in the ufc as well of course yeah so man you know it depends let's see what hill brings that night it's like one of those weird but i think Pereira should win but hill is one of those guys that has a striking from a long range and can really uh what I don't know about his grappling pedigree. The only fights I saw was the ones where, you know, he, he was out striking the guys. So, you know, that would be the, that would be who, whose clench game is better. Who, who clenches up and who touches each other early on in the fight. That would determine the outcome, I, I believe. But again, I don't like to give a full opinion without doing full research on each individual. The have you been watching any new movies lately? Like, have you seen Conor McGregor in Roadhouse? I mean, I, I watched the Cliffs Notes, you know, and I just think that uh, Conor McGregor deserves an actor, uh, uh, some type of Oscar Emmy. Do they give Emmys for that? Oscar. Some type of thing. Yeah, look, he did a great job. You know, he's badass. Uh, he, he slipped right into the villain role uh, suspiciously easily. And uh, that was badass. And... <laughs> You know, what is going on in planet Earth where I'm over here going, man, I got to get buff like Jake Gyllenhaal, right? Like, what the hell? I never thought I would say that phrase. I got to get jacked like Gyllenhaal. And you know what I mean? I'm like in the, I'm, I'm in the gym doing presses and sit-ups going, I'm going to, I'm going to be like Nightcrawler. Urgh. So, you know, that's the world we live in these days. Uh, thank God, man. Thank God that the world keeps rolling on. And lastly, I mean, it's always great to see you. It's been a couple years, but I got you a gift. Oh, you want me to open this right now? It's like Oprah. You're like the, you're like the MMA Oprah Winfrey. Wait, what the hell? 
That's racist. I use chopsticks. Thank you very much. What's in here anyway? The hell? This is straight white people Chinese food. Did your mom make this for me? Yeah, just for you. <laughs> well, I, you can't be serious, ye. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. We're going viral with this one. There's bones in there. Um, is that Conor McGregor's foot? <laughs> no, it's Thanks not ye. a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ye. You really did me dirty on this one. It's all the love. <laughs> Where's Ashton Kutcher? Where's Ashton? <laughs> Fuck you, Ashton. And for the fans who love you and miss you and can't wait to see more of you, what would you like to let them know? See y'all on the internet. Here I am, back again. God bless America. I can't even believe you're serious right now. You know what? I'm going to try it again. All right. You know what? Once you get through the gristle... Do I swallow the bone, too? No. Oh, shit. Too late. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Uh, fighters. Fighters and fucking... Feet. Fighters and feet. Eating feet. <coughs> okay. I'm